Yeah, yeah if they don't. Then I'll pass it back. <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, great. All right, if we're ready, we'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There we go. Good evening and welcome to the 15 December 2014 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting. Roman one public comment period. Those wishing public comment, please ah. take the podium. Mr. Preston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir. Hello, the board. I'd like to touch briefly on uh, the town manager's report, number four. And it's about the winter parking ban from um, 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. daily during snow emergency. Residents can park in the lots until 7. And they must be removed so the town could can clear the lots for future use. Well, I think this is deja vu again, about that time of year for me. But I'm specifically talking about the, the lot down the beach, Ashworth, and maybe Island Path, but it, it can, you know, go to the other lots in town too. Cause it's, it's getting better, but there's still room for improvement. Now the Ashworth Ave lot, we've gone from no parking where it wasn't plowed at all and the gates were blocked, even where the access road to the police station was blocked by no plowing at all to plowing the whole lot. So we've gone from not enough plowing to too much plowing. And when I say this, the, you know, somewhere in the middle is common sense. Somewhere in the middle is dollars and cents. Okay. I, I'd like to ask if we could get have DPW together with HPD, put their heads together and say, how many spaces do you need? Because we know that HPD runs training sessions down there sometimes, and you'll see, you know, 20 or 30 cars, they're from all over the state, and they use our training room down there, so they need spaces for that. There's also spaces that the neighborhood uses. There's also flooding issues where Brown Ave can be flooded and the guys can get in and out of that station, driving straight in off Ashworth Ave, the bottom F Street to the lot. But the other thing that I'd like to say is, and I, and I realize there's some discretion here, but storms, they don't know what time it is. They don't know if it's day or night. You know, what we have for issues down there, when we have demand for these spaces, it's an event of some sort. It could be a storm. It could be a flood caused by moons, full moons, new moons. It could be the Special Olympics events. It could be the training that the, that the police do. But we can work this better. We don't have to plow the whole lot. But at the same time, there's, there's a way we could get together and say, how many spaces the, the neighborhood really used during a storm? How many did the police use? Why couldn't you take some Jersey barriers, line them up, and you tell everybody, look, you park between A and B here. Whether well, you got to put up a couple flags, and you say, this is the parking. Because if you went to anybody that lives in the neighborhood and said during a storm, if you park there, don't worry, you'll be able to get out. You line it up so the guy plowing has a straight shot right down, you know, right down. You can make it work. In the private sector, we make it work all the time. Because you tell people, look, you park here, or you won't be parked anywhere at all, or you might be buried in. <laughs> it does work. And, um, and I, you know, I, I really think we could do something like that. I, I, I've spoken to a few different things on odd and even, you know. Where th that might be down the road. If we start with the high flyers or something, that's, that's a start. But like I said, we've gone from no plowing to overreaction of too much plowing, and, and, and that's a lot of money. The state is doing a better job. They're plowing the CPA. I mean, I went up to the governor's office 10 years ago with a petition with 225 signatures with the names and addresses of everybody on them. They've just really started to plow the CPA lot, but a few years ago, I'm going to say maybe three, I could be wrong, it could be two, during what I'm going to call the Hogmanay fireworks, which is, by the way, special, is an announcement, the Hogmanay fireworks on New Year's Eve, 8 o'clock, it's a great event, tell everybody to come on down. During one of them, two or three years ago, there was a little bit of snow. The state took some heat, I believe it was from the HPAC, and also from um, the Hampton Beach Village District, they could have done a better job cleaning it up. It really wasn't that bad. But anyway, there was a storm right after that, 
and the state overreacted to it, plowed it. They did a lot of damage to curbings, and that in three days later would have been melted and gone. So, you know, a little common sense, but like I said, it is getting better. Hopefully, down the road, we can get into a real great system, which is like they have in Newburyport. <coughs> if any people aren't familiar with it, check it out sometime. Because when I said storms don't know if it's day or night or what time it is, down there they have flashing lights. And when they're on, everybody's off the road. Doesn't matter day or night. It's a snow emergency, and it works. But it works because they plow. You give people a place to go. When those lights are on, they have the school parking lots all over town, and it works. That's down the road. We can do it. But let's start something small here, and um, we can definitely improve it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Further public comment this evening, Mr. Moody. Art Moody, Three Thompson Road. Uh, you have a, a road naming again on the agenda for uh, the Susan Scott subdivision off Winnicott kind of Road east of whatever the street is. Sandman. Started out as Gaywood a Acres. I forget what it's called now. Sandman, Arthur. Sandman Road, uh, which is a good old Hampton name. Uh, <coughs> You've got down uh, three choices for a second, third. Robertson Path. It should be Richardson. <clears throat> he was a lieutenant in the King Phillips War in a battle in Maine. He died in June 1677. <clears throat> However, we don't know his first name. We don't know if he was from Hampton. He was under a command of Captain Sweat, S-W-E-T-T. Well, we do know his first name, Benjamin. We know he was of Hampton, and he died in the same battle in Maine. This was after a few week, couple of weeks after some citizens were killed, the other two names, up near Greenland, which was later Ham North Hampton. Uh, it, it was Hampton at the time. And we don't know that they were military. They were civilian. And we do know their first names. There were two others killed at the same time, but names are already taken. <coughs> Apparently, you're not taking the last board's vote to not get involved with all these French and Indian War names. Queen Anne's War, <coughs> King Philip's War. King Philip was the enemy. He was an Indian chief down in Plymouth Colony area. Uh, so you're not a bank, you're not going by that last board's vote to do it differently. But if you're going to do it military, it should be military under the advisory vote of town meeting. And if you're going to go back to the 1600s, uh, it sh probably should be Sweat, Benjamin Sweat, captain of Hampton. He had been promoted eight, eight days. <clears throat> also, the, the only Civil War death from Hampton that doesn't have a family name for a road is James Fair, F-A-I-R. Now I'd like to get on to Wednesday's planning board hearings on 10 amendments to the zoning ordinance. Two of them involve your jurisdiction, and they should, you should get a court order to stop them from infringing on your jurisdiction. Last week there was discussion about interfering in other boards. And I disagree heartily. You're the governing body of the town. No other <coughs> board can say that. And I even found in the statutes where individual selectmen have authority. A couple of matters so far I've found. <coughs> which means it's a special position you're in. One article is to making an immediate amendment to their town center crap, uh, thing they voted in, May, in, in January. A majority of those board members and planning board voted to put on the ballot for rezoning town center. They're already amending that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it provides for, it, it had provided for no parking requirements on site if you're within 500 feet of a town parking lot. Well, that's outrageous. Outrageous, even if a tiny bit of it's 500 feet away. The rest is further. Two spaces per condo, two spaces per apartment, dwelling unit, and other requirements for parking. Last year it was you certify 500 feet to the planner. This year it's going to be changed to you certify to the planning board. But you still have that right, no matter if there's any spaces there or not. You are control town, town land. You have ordinances on that parking lot. The only overnight parking first recognized by the ordinances in December 1996. That's the limit of overnight parking on the east side. The rest is two-hour parking. Mm -hmm. What if they fill it up? What if you sell it? What if the town decides to sell the lot or part of it? It's ridiculous to base that on free parking on town lot that the planning board has no jurisdiction over town land. The other article is at the end. Tax maps are going to be the new arbiter of, tax, of, of district lines, although they call them zones. If they look at chapter, their own chapter 2 of the zoning ordinance, they'll find that they're not called zones, they're called districts. And they're saying that we're going to use the tax maps, which have that on the tax maps, little circles with a little line with 300 maps. And those maps are outdated already. Some are 10 years old, 9 years old. If you look at map number 161 for rezoning the POR, professional office residential in this area of the town office, not the high street, you'll find that you can't determine what high street is anymore to Mill Road. It looks like it's RB on the tax map, but it wasn't. It was the new POR. So please stop this garbage. They have no jurisdiction over the tax maps. You are the assessors of the town by law. You're under their control. Get rid of that off the tax maps if it's costing us money. And they're never updated immediately. But you may have a rezoning. 20 maps need to be redone, forget it. We don't do them in-house. Consultant engineer. Well, I've had my six minutes or so, and I had other ma matters, but you've got one more meeting this year. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one quick question for Mr. Moody. Obviously, you're referring to uh, Article 10 that's proposed on the tax maps. But what other article are you referring to, Arthur? The, for the, the other article, article is article four? five. I'm just going to. I'm just going to okay. stop. I'm just going to stop this. Okay. We're, we're, article we're not five. Gonna, I, I'm just going to stop it. I you, just want we're going on go ten on minutes. Read the we're, we're, folder. Can, can okay. I just grab the floor here? I'll we're we're not going to get interactive. You it's you have to comment. go in and read the folder. Okay. Which you'll never see in your, even your warrant, and you used to see Arthur. All Arthur. of the ordinance. All right. the we're, we're pushing 10 minutes. It's okay. a four-minute limit. We're, we're making laws here. It's we're important. not making laws here. That's what the legislature does. Let me pull does. a DeMarco. One more item. <laughs> Thank you. Further public comment? Mr. Jones. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Budget Committee last uh, revealed uh, a couple facts <coughs> that uh, seem to be at odds, Mr. Chairman, with some of the alleged facts that have been emanating from this body, specifically the reorganization regarding the uh, assistant town manager producing a substantial savings, dollar savings, to the town in the budget. At the budget committee last, it was reported and apparently confirmed by the town manager that it's not a net savings but a net cost. I think it incumbent on this board to correct the record to disabuse the public from having uh, accepted from this body previously stated facts, which apparently are an error. Alternatively, you can restate the, uh, the record. The numbers apparently are not in 
dispute with the town manager. Also, uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, contracts that you've been engaging in uh, seems to be at odds with a legal brief provided by the New Hampshire Municipal Association, which pretty much sums up by saying that uh, contracts must be approved by Tom Warren article. Now, you've praised the Municipal Association's legal work in the past, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps you're making an exception in this case because, well, it's not convenient to accept it. So, which is it? Is the <coughs> Municipal Association legal work the high quality you have reported it to be, or only when it's convenient for you? Thank you. Thank you. For the public comment, I'm seeing none. Announcements <coughs> and community calendar. Selectman Wilson. Um, yes, we uh, received confirmation that uh, Alan Jones of the Public Works Department has received his uh, Rhodes Scholar certification. I think it's a third of four steps, and we congratulate him and are proud of the uh, extra work that the employees do to enhance their uh, education. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. Yep, the uh, firefighters are doing their toy bank still. They're still collecting toys for needy children in town. If you have an opportunity to help them out, please do so. Box in the lobby. Box in the lobby here and plus many other uh, restaurants and uh, businesses throughout the town. Thank you, sir. Nothing Something tonight? Done. Nothing. Mr. Welch? Sir. Any? No. None. Seeing none. Three, Roman three, consent agenda. One, permission for Conservation Commission to erect signage at Jonty's Lane, Great Gate, Woods Farm, Herd Farm, White's Lane, and Drakeside Road. Number two, permission for Conservation Commission to receive donations from the Victory Garden. A motion? So moved. I'll second it. Second Waddell. All those in favor? Okay, you're, you're talking, you're going a little speedy here for a second. You're talking about just item two? I oh, is that said, the motion? Let me let me let me just rephrase what I said. I okay. stated Roman three consent agenda. I read number one. I read number two. Mm -hmm. I asked for a motion. There was a second. We're going to vote. Oh, okay. But I have a question on the signage, and Jay Diener is here. So if we okay, well, let me just for a point of order. The consent agenda is something that is routine and very very close to administrative minutia that we like to. If you have issues with this in the, in the future going forward, and this seems to be a pattern, we'll just remove that and, and put it on the consent agenda when you're ready and satisfied that we can just move these. So uh, do you want to remove two? I don't want to remove it. I, I just want to ask one question, and Mr. Dina can probably clarify it in a second. And what is your question? Move fast. The permanent signs? Yeah. Okay. And do they all relate to hunting season or just White's Lane and Jaunty's Lane? Um, none of them relate to hunting specifically. They identify them as town-owned conservation lands. Oh, okay. So the hunting signs would be separate. Correct. Bless you. Thank you. That's all I need to know. I'm voting in favor. Thank you, ma'am. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. That wasn't too painful. It wasn't painful at all. Roman four appointments. One, David Wood, Robert Ladd, and Jay Diener, Alpha Governor's Commission on Sea Level Rise. And that is, please, gentlemen, the, the chair, uh, that is... Um, not the name of the commission. It is the New Hampshire uh, Commission on the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. Gentlemen, please. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the Board of Selectmen and to Mr. Welch, the town manager, for letting us come and speak tonight. Uh, my name is David Wood, a resident of Hampton. I live at Four Ruth Lane. I was also recently elected to be the state rep for Hampton, and I'm also on the budget committee. Um, but tonight I'm here representing a commission that was established by the governor back in July of 2013. It was a commission that was going to address sea level rise and other coastal risks and hazards. Um, throughout the country, people are looking at this, and I, I don't want to get into what's causing it. Um, we could spend the next <laughs> month of Sundays talking about what's causing it. That really doesn't matter. The important thing is <coughs> Uh, climate is changing and being a coastal community it behooves us to start planning for it now and that's basically what the Commission was put together for it consists of approximately 45 members 
all of the coastal towns are, have a representative. I was asked to be the representative from the Board of Selectmen back in July of 2013. Um, not all of you were here then, um, but I know some were. Um, it was a three-year post that I volunteered for and was granted. <coughs> And for the first year, we pretty much gathered a team of experts, not that I'm an expert, but um, we, we gathered a lot of folks together to look not only at what's happening here at Hampton, but also what's happening along the entire New Hampshire seacoast, that's where our focus has been, but also the entire New England coast, and also <coughs> learning from FEMA, and two other gentlemen here with me today, Jay is going to talk to you a little bit later about FEMA and the point system and how that can help with insurance rates and things like that that we brought up the last time. And Mr. Ladd is here um, representing the, the Beach District as well. Um, I want to point out, I've got, there was, part of our commission was to get a group of people, and it didn't cost us anything, which is one of our priorities. Um, mostly folks from the University of New Hampshire, um, every department of the state of New Hampshire was represented. Um, everyone from the Department of Transportation to the Department of Environment, um, they have been very active in this commission, and they will be available to any of you if you have any questions. Probably, there's a website, um, it's very easy to remember, it's the name of our title, it's the New Hampshire, it's N-H-C-R-H-C, -H -C. if you were to Google that, it'll come up. We are basically a subset of NOAA. But we have literally dozens and dozens of presentations and articles. I've printed for each of the selectmen and the town manager um, a 48-page document that was put together by our science committee. I'm not going to give it to you until we're done talking or you won't pay attention to us. <laughs> but more importantly... Um, it's the only time you make sure we read it. <laughs> um, but I also want to make it known to all the residents of Hampton yeah. that this website exists for their perusal as well. Do you get any questions? I'm going to leave you my home telephone number and my email address. Uh, if I can't answer the question for you, I can certainly put you in touch with the state entity who would be responsible for that. Okay. We've asked to meet with your department heads. Um, we are going to meet tomorrow. Unfortunately, I have to go to Concord. I didn't find out until last night I have to do that, but Jay was nice enough to, uh, to facilitate that meeting. Um, basically, the purpose of the meeting is for our town department heads to look at what's happened in the past, but more importantly, what can we do to prevent what's going to happen in the future. Um, there might be legislation that's going to be passed as a result of this, um, but a lot of it has to do more with changing zoning, looking at zoning. We, we don't want people to think that they're going to have to change where they currently live or put their cottage on stilts. It's more to do with <laughs> on a go-forward basis from a planning perspective, and this is perfect timing because Hampton now has its own planning manager, um, we need to start looking at where we're building. We need to start creating standards for <coughs> the proper way to build in order to prepare for the future. So we'll be going to the Department of Public Works and we're going to be saying, where do we currently have problems? Um, what are the roads that we need to address? How do we and they already have a very good relationship, but how do we facilitate the relationship between the Department of Public Works and our own Department of Public Works? Um, so a lot of what I'll be doing is saying, where do you see the need? Uh, but we need to tie in all of the departments, from the police to the fire, planning, um, zoning, there, there's, and Mr. Welch will obviously be, be part of coordinating that to make sure everyone's getting fed that information. And I'd like to be your conduit from the state. Um, we certainly have a lot of help from the federal government, um, but, and I know it, everyone is very concerned about insurance rates. The moral of the story is, uh, the more we can do proactively, the better it's going to be for all of us. And again, like I said at the beginning, I don't care what's causing it. The truth is, and it's not just the coast, it's um, sea level rises <coughs> impacting our neighboring towns like Exeter, anywhere where there's a river. Yes. Yep. Um, it's, it's a problem, and we, and we can't fix it after the fact. We have to fix it and plan ahead. Um, the Department of Transportation has a 10-year plan. I know all of you are aware of that. Um, we're looking at a 50-year plan. We're looking way into the future beyond all of us, but we need to plan for the future. 
How do you do that? Well, some of the things they were talking about was if you're going to put up a, a wall for today's requirements, how hard would it be to, to raise it even higher down the road? It, so we're, we're trying to think long term as opposed to just short term. So um, like I said, I'll be giving you, this is the, the report that was issued by uh, this scientific panel. Um, if you have any questions on it, feel free to give me a call. Like I said, if I can't answer it, I'll connect you with someone who will or I'll go to them and get the answer for you. And we can, at the end of us talking, if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask. And I'll turn it over to Jay, and he'd like to talk a little bit about FEMA and the point system. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as, as Dave said, there's, there's a tremendous amount of information that has been generated and that is being generated about what's happening specifically in New Hampshire as far as sea level rise and storm activity is concerned. I want to make sure people can hear you. Maybe pull those little microphones a little. Because you tend to be a gentleman and talk softly. So. There. Um, and there's a lot of that information on uh, Dave's oh, website. Uh, there is a lot of information that is, there is some information that's currently on the Conservation Commission website, and we'll be populating that with more information as time goes by. Um, I do want to talk to you about the community rating system, which is a FEMA program. Yes. Um, to be a part of that system. It's a voluntary incentive program uh, for the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, the town, through the town planner, and um, I know with the town manager involved and the town attorney, is working to upgrade our zoning ordinances to make sure that we're in compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program. Part of the reason for that is to ensure that we can qualify for the community rating system. The community rating system uh, rewards communities that are doing more than meeting the basic NFIP, National Flood Insurance Program, standards by reducing <coughs> flood insurance premiums for their residents. Hampton has over 1,700 properties that have flood insurance. Um, so the impact that joining this program can have on our community is, is monumental. It, we're talking about thousands upon thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. We can, depending on how, how much we get involved in this program, save our residents up to 45% on their flood insurance premiums. So you can drop them substantially. The way the program works is that there are four categories in which to earn points, with a total of 20 activities across the four categories. And I'm just going to give you some brief mm -hmm. examples. There's a public information category where if you publish elevation certificates, if you have map information services available, if you put information in the library, you're going to get points that accumulate towards your rate reduction in the uh, community rating system. There are mapping and regulatory activities such as open space preservation, as, and as you know, we've already, we're already doing that as a community, so we're probably already earning points towards some of these categories. Um, if you have higher regulatory standards, what Dave has been talking about, that also earns you points in the community rating system. There is a flood damage reduction activity program um, that talks about floodplain management planning, again, the type of thing that Dave is talking about doing, uh, drainage system maintenance, which mm -hmm. our DPW is already doing. Um, the last category is flood preparedness, which includes flood warning programs um, and also dam safety programs. Those are examples of some of the programs, some of the activities that the town can get involved in. Um, I know that uh, our town planner, uh, Jason Bichand, has been working with the conservation coordinator um, and also with Jennifer Gilbert, who is the state rep for yep. insurance issues, to find out exactly what's involved in getting the town into the community rating uh, system program. Um, I was at a seminar last Thursday, and I met with the town planner from Rye there are a few steps ahead of us in getting involved in this program. She and Jason also had a conversation, so we're already sharing information with some of the other communities along the coast to find out what's involved in this program, what have you learned that we can benefit from so that we can take advantage of this. So this is a program through which the town helps to buttress itself, if you will, 
um, against the potential impacts from storm surge and from sea level rise. And in the process of doing so, benefits a lot of our residents economically. So there's really no downside. And there's a lot of upside for the town participating in the community rating system. And I would encourage the town to support our involvement in that system to the greatest extent possible. Thank you, sir. Mr. Light. Okay. I would add to that, at the outset, the National Flood Insurance Program must be authorized to participate in the town to get into the community rating system. So it's critical that the zoning ordinances pass that are being proposed and that they be in compliance. The downside of not being in the National Flood Insurance Program is catastrophic. That effectively ends the federal government's willingness to sell insurance to the town. Those who presently have policies, when those policies come due for renewal, will not be renewed. They will get no FEMA support after an event. They will get no financial support from many of the mortgage lending governmental agencies. So it's critical to, to get the word out to the community that this ordinance to comply with the flood insurance program is essential for the town. Obviously, if you're not in that, I can't speculate what the negative impact on the value of properties might become, which ultimately becomes a negative impact on the town in terms of assessed values. Jay also mentioned a bunch of activities the town can engage in. <coughs> As I understand it, once you're in the floodplain program, these nine steps are accomplished by compliance with certain activities. Uh, one of the activities involves communication to the community. Two of the uh, 19 activities must be accomplished to be in the program. One deals with certificates of elevation and the other deals with floodplain management. I think that the number is 310 and 510. These are not optional activities, but all the others are. Among the optional activities, as I said, are issues concerning communication, and particularly promoting the awareness and encouragement of people to buy flood insurance. Under these programs, you can do directly many things to enhance the town's position in the program. And at this time, I am authorized by the village district to propose that if you are willing to send a notice to the residents who live in the floodplain zones, that the district is willing to pay half the cost of the potions to notify these people. This accomplishes many goods. And under these activities that are required for the community rating system, notice to these people gets you points. More importantly, as a community, we should tell each other those things that impact us most and not just leave it to just kind of a random general knowledge of becoming aware of things. It doesn't happen. So I do throw that out for your consideration and see if we can't get something done. Also, you can piggyback for community activity credits on things being done by other than the town. You could probably get credits for all the meeting agenda items we've had concerning these issues at the precinct. These are all recorded. We are an active political body within the town. So you should look into getting credits for those activities. Uh, there's just an endless stream of good that can come from it. But I would emphasize the first step is making sure we stay in the National Floodplain Insurance Program. School's out for everybody if we don't. Yeah. Uh, the sanctions are absolutely intolerable. Once in that program, we should all work together toward community rating improvements. Five or ten percent on a two thousand dollar premium is wonderful. Ten or twenty percent is even better. These are the kinds of things you can probably reach. It's unlikely, realistically, you can get to forty five percent. But right now we are basically rated a ten. All that means is we are in the National Floodplain Insurance Program, but we are not community rated to any advantage. So hopefully, going forward. Uh, we can address some of these problems. I would also support Jay and David's comments about who should run this. FEMA 
does not absolutely require the town run it, but as you drill down into the process, the only way it's going to work is for the town to take control and ownership of it. Ultimately, <coughs> whoever the community rating coordinator is, and you must have one under the rating system to get these credits, that person must have the authority of the CEO of the town, i.e. the town manager normally in this uh, governmental body, to be authorized to act on behalf of the town with FEMA. So it's really not the sort of project you can simply outsource to uh, another political body, yeah. private sector normally, or yeah. a commission formed by the state which meets occasionally. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go on much longer on this, but this is kind of where we have, and I would just like to end by reoffering our offer to help support the cost of notice to the people in the zone. One other thing I'd like to add, too, to what we've talked about is that there's an awful lot that's already gone on that a lot of people aren't aware of. If, if you talk about the meetings, every single town has, has already had a, a lot of meetings. Um, so we're, we're ahead of the curve on that. The other thing is that the New Hampshire seacoast is a unique issue in that there's only 18 miles of our seacoast. Um, the federal government would like to look at us as a great place for a trial because they can look at a smaller area. The more federal involvement we can get, the better for all of us, because you know, as you know, I'm on the budget committee. I know how limited our funds are already. <clears throat> Working now at the state house, I know how limited the funds are there. <laughs> so anything we can do to get the federal government to help us, and the easier we make it for them, the more willingness we're showing them that we're willing to work with them, the more likely they are to invest federal funds in anything that we're doing. But I do agree with what Mr. Ladd suggested about it. Whoever in the town does become the agent for this all to work, it really is something that you really want to keep in-house. It, it's on a go-forward basis. It's going to be more and more of an issue. Uh, we, we really need to take some of these steps before, God forbid, some of the events take place. It, it, we don't want to be someone saying, why don't you do something? Or we don't want to say, I told you so, it was caused by car emissions or whatever. We, we want to think ahead and plan for the future, if not just for us, for our children and their children. Any questions? Just like and Wolsey. Yes. Is there any reason why that heating thing keeps running and running? It's really interfering with how Is that you a question? Well, you know, but it's interfering a little bit with how we can hear. Um, yes, I have several things. First of all, thank all of you. Thanks, Dave. for what you're doing because it's great to see some proactive uh, efforts coming out of the community um, for all of us this is long overdue because the problem has been accumulating for years but um, I will say that uh, Jay uh, Jay nags very effectively and I did manage to get to the second uh, estuary meeting uh, that was held in Hampton and and I said to them what I will what I will say to you now um, focusing on this problem. We, the planning is wonderful, the studies are wonderful, and all of this is needed, but we are losing the fight one building permit at a time. I drove up Drakeside Road today. Normally I go on Exeter Road and go over to my office, but today I took a detour because I was coming up from Hampton Falls to go to work. And I don't go down Drakeside that much, but I'm looking at the new build on Drakeside Road in the wet, wet, wet. And believe it or not, Drakeside Road isn't the ocean. But believe it or not, that area is wet, wet. We have a lot of properties at risk because we've been allowing and not protecting, for example, <clears throat> the Aquifer Protection District that was put there for a reason and now is not being perhaps utilized. Um, if I see one more comment on, on planning that says unavoidable wetland crossing, I'm really going to get upset because all wetland crossings are avoidable. With regard to in insurance, and I'm seeing a lot of this and Phil probably is as well, primary residences, as far as the flood insurance, are going up as far as the secondary residences are really, really going to get hit. There are individuals who have bought property in Hampton with an eye toward retiring down the road a little bit. And many of them are transitioning faster than they thought they would and making 
their residents in Hampton a primary residence to help mitigate some of the costs of, of the flood insurance because whether or not it is, your primary, it is your primary residence is a problem. I'm also seeing individuals, um, obviously if you have a mortgage, the mortgage company is going to make you take flood insurance. Now people who have lines of credit, it's, I mean, it's you owe the bank <laughs> money, but For it's sure. not a mortgage mortgage, are now starting to force people to get flood insurance. So you're starting to see, I'm, I think, I'm starting to see the, uh, from the insurance ground level a trend going on here. So there's a lot at risk and uh, it's going to all cost a huge amount of money and it's going to cost more, more money and it's going to deprive us of taxable property if we allow this situation to go unchecked. If you lose a town, the professor from UNHJ at the estuary meeting who had his diagrams or uh, maps to show uh, 2020 and 2050, yep. that's not too many years down the road. And those maps were scary. Some of those scenarios are very scary. Yep. They're projections. We don't know what's going to happen, but it makes sense to start planning for whatever eventuality might befall us. And hopefully we never have to institute those plans, but at yep. least it we need to have them on the boards. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. What what all of you are doing is really critical for the community, and I thank you. So the range they're looking at, just seeing low, is at a minimum when they're talking about a one foot increase in sea level rise. Yes. But the maximum is six feet, and although that doesn't sound like a lot, it depends on where you are. Mm. One foot. I can think of Route One heading towards Hampton Falls. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and it's it's not only the increase sea level rise but what will that do when there's a storm yes if it's already <coughs> elevated so yeah it, it, it's a serious issue such as there it. was last Wednesday um, I don't know if any of you were down near the beach last Wednesday but it was a mess um, and yes. there were some places that I saw where I've never seen so much water in our salt marsh yeah um, because we had a full moon high tide and and we had a storm surge and it gets really really scary if I might, uh, I would like to uh, talk with that. I was there last Wednesday looking out the window, and I did see high water on Ocean Boulevard, and it has nothing to do with the storm surge. Has nothing, And I'm so tired of people saying, oh, this is what's happening. It isn't. It's because the state's drains do not work. And I didn't hear you mention anything about working with the state and getting some help. I mean, that should be the main thing that should be done. From what I hear at the planning board, even the drains don't work down um, at the beginning of the beach where the golf course, where the pirate is down there, um, <clears throat> were some things that were recently uh, approved, some condos down there. The neighbors all came and they were talking about how the drains don't work. And there were, for one thing, the condo that was built, when the water drains off that, it's going that way. But the drains that don't work are the state drains. and. To me, it's a crime. I have lived on Ocean Boulevard for 50 years. There was no water came out of the marsh last Wednesday into my parking area. All of, for years when I've lived there, I, for the last 15 years, I haven't been able to get any more um, cattails, which grow in salt area. All of those have been killed out, and it's all the fresh water that's draining off the road. It doesn't come from the ocean, doesn't come from the marsh, and to me, it is just so upsetting to, to have water uh, almost coming into my building just because the state drains don't work. This is a perfect opportunity to get things like that taken care of. We have well, three executives from the DOT on our commission. The purpose they've of heard, us been listening to me for the last 10 years and they've done nothing. <laughs> but, but now you've got both and state I know reps every one of them. and state senators and a governor who is and asking the town, what are the issues yep. that you want us to look at? I think our so state senator was there last Wednesday when my flood was there. So, I mean, they're all aware of it, but no one's doing anything, and it has nothing to do with sea level rise. It's the drains don't work all the way down Ocean Boulevard and from uh, Boris Head to Winnicunit Road. It's unbelievable how bad they are. The state keeps coming down and fooling with them, but they don't fix them. Well, another thing and they worked at for years. One of the things that this commission is looking at is there, there is a law passed by the federal government that has to do with when there's an emergency and, for instance, say a bridge or a, a roadway gets damaged by a storm. With today's law, we can only rebuild it to the exact 
right. way it was originally right. created. Well, that doesn't necessarily work because we're saying, well, things have changed. We need to build it better. Mm -hmm. So we're actu actually, uh, Congress is looking at changing that law. But those are the types of things. At this point of the game, what we're looking for is information like you just mentioned. We can take that as a commission and go to the different departments who are, have really been very helpful. I mean, they're, they're willing to help, but we need to feed that information. <coughs> So should I do that through the DPW director? Um, how well, how do I, we get that kind of information? Um, what caught my ear is what you talk about the places that are flooding from the DPW. Well, yeah, they're going to mention it's one of the worst places, but it has nothing to do with sea level rise. I've been in with meetings with Mr. Welch, and I can tell you, yeah, they're very nice, and they're going to listen, but they've done nothing. And I've been working on this for 11 years, and even that's the main reason I started running for selectman when I first started. <coughs> and I don't see anyone listening. Well, I'm, I'll be and willing to listen, and now is your opportunity. I to will really tell you that uh, for years it was tied up because, and Jay, you might know, or Fred, you you must know, the uh, the guy that was the big wig uh, that was in charge wanted to drain the water instead of putting it into the marsh. He wants to drain it into the ocean, but it was going to cost thirty-five million dollars instead of a small amount that they could fix it, like. The metal drains worked for 50 years, and That's true. And yeah. who, who is that? I can't remember his name. But well, the, the, it was State now. DOT, yeah. and, and the head of their, their maintenance for a drainage in, in the highway division. They wanted to buck the grade and go back out to the ocean at um, Dumas Avenue. Yeah, yeah so and everybody to else drain one drain or two drains, <laughs> and the cost was 35 million dollars to do that. And I'm all for it. I think they should spend it, but I don't think it's like <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I would love to work with you and many, I, I understand it. I watch. And I'll tell you, the other day on Wednesday is the first time I've had two inches into the front of my whole area. It's it didn't right. come into my water. It didn't come into my building. Um, but I've lived there for 50 years. This just never, ever happened. At the one time I've ever had damage was back in 1978. And it was during the storm of 78. Yeah. And I think it was because I was out of town and they, I think they plowed me the wrong way and the water came in. But there's just no need for it. Most of the problems that I see on Ocean Boulevard are fresh water, not salt water. Okay. But I appreciate everything that you do. Mr. Bridal. Storm of 78 wasn't they plowed the wrong way. There was just a lot of water down there. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I was there. Yeah. Um, thank you for bringing this up. Thanks for. Uh, I, I think you're right. Now's the time to start strike while the iron's hot. You know, we've got some uh, proposed um, uh, zoning, and we need to make sure people are aware of that. Um, and we need to maybe possibly look at sending out some flyers if we can work with the beach village district. So I think that's a, a good start, and I think, you know, we can keep moving forward. Because you're right, we're going to say ultimately, we're going to save, save the citizens some, you know, Money on their ta on their their insurance, which is yeah. you know, a good thing. Do we need to make a motion for that? Can we go, go around the room? Then we'll come back to motion, sir. If that that's okay with you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Dave, Jay, and Bob, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for the work you're doing. Um, and I, I agree that mitigating the the problem is is, is really necessary, and you got to work with that. And I just hope we do it intelligently, working with everybody that's concerned. You know, because we are a growing town. And there are developers, and there are buildings going on, and, I, and I'm not anti-building or anti-development. And I think we really should should be, you know, including those people in there, you know. And I think we should be mitigating the problems to to make sure that we, we can handle it. I, you know, I'm not sure. I think where I live, I think the marsh does come across the road. Yeah. On High Street, yeah. I think I had a hard time getting to the budget committee or that's the true. <laughs> committee the other night when it was almost up to the door <laughs> in my car. Mm -hmm. So I, I I do think it does come there. Um, and I, I think it's a it, it's an overall problem, and I, I I think as Dave said, why it's happening, who knows, but it is happening, and it is going to continue to happen. And, and we really, I mean, I always hate to be too much involved with the federal government, <laughs> but if FEMA is going to pull out, you're in big trouble. Then you're not going to have insurance. So I think yeah. you have to stay in there and have to really stay on top of that. So, you know, I agree. I, I'm for you. And when, uh, Bob, when you said sending out notice to all the people. Yeah. How does it have to? How do they have to be notified? I would say the most correct way would be in a written letter format, 
you don't have all the email addresses. Yeah. Theoretically, you could put a notice in the public library in the town hall, but I don't think FEMA would be as credit giving yeah. as they would be for. But but it's not a certified. It's oh, not, no, it wouldn't not have certified be to regular mail. Regular mail uh, or something, which would not be that that expensive. No, it wouldn't be that expensive. Right. It does get you some credits, and I think more importantly, it gets you in the community on the same side of the issue. Mm -hmm. And we owe people who live in this area awareness, I think. Yeah. I, I agree, and I, and I agree that we should, we should be doing this, we should be working on it, we should be working at the, at the local level, the state level, and the federal level, yeah. and making sure that the local level has, has control of what they're doing. Uh, and so if, if I right. might, I'd like to make one comment that, of an issue you raised, uh, Selectman Woolsey. Under grandfathering, it is required that you have insurance prior to the adoption of the new floodplain maps which is in September. Right. You can't get into the community rating system before May, and after May you can't get into it even if you comply until October. So there, there's a very short window of opportunity to be in it ahead of the floodplain map change, but it is doable. Yeah, thank you. That's right. Yes, sir. Good. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we covered a couple of issues tonight. Uh, the agenda uh, mischaracterized your commission. And uh, we have identified that as the New Hampshire Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. That was brought into being by uh, 483 Echo 2, which is a law passed by the state legislature. It calls for upwards of 38 members, members from varying towns. And there's been concerns here tonight. And thank you for your work about uh, the interest of Hampton. We're going to come back to you, Rick. I just want to to grab this and so we'll come back for seconds. Uh, but I think that Rollinsford, Greenland, Stratum, Newmarket, Hampton Falls, Madbury, and Newcastle certainly have different challenges than the town of Hampton. And uh, this is a committee, uh, and I have uh, spent all afternoons looking at your minutes, looking at uh, water information. Uh, I know that uh, 12,000 years ago, the ocean extended all the way to Barrington, New Hampshire. I know that uh, Prior to or, or after that, uh, it extended uh, out to the shoals. It, it receded. And uh, I've lived in North Carolina. I've seen beaches disappear, and I've seen houses disappear, and uh, I've seen uh, first responders, and I've seen the private sector response to that. And they always come back, and they build their houses higher, and the stilts are higher. <laughs> but uh, we, we do have concerns here in Hampton about our, uh, our community. And I think when you talk the coast, and I think you talk business and you talk builders and you talk citizens that our, our needs uh, speak uh, much more loudly than some of these other communities. And I do note that uh, when I look at the committee membership here, there's Fred Rice, uh, Chris Munns was on there, and Nancy Stiles. Is. He is wonderful, so he'll be the rep from Hampton. So uh, again, the, uh, the law states, and uh, we all strictly adhere to the law, that the Commission shall recommend legislation rules and other actions to prepare for projected sea level rise and other coastal and coastal watershed hazards such as storms, increased river flooding, stormwater runoff, and the risks such hazards pose to municipalities and state assets in New Hampshire. Selectman Griffin has spoken to mm -hmm. those non-saltwater or seawater issues that, that probably everybody would agree the state has neglected for years and years. So hopefully that will be part of your thrust as well, that, that man-made solution uh, to, to uh, fresh water. Uh, the Commission shall review National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and other scientific agency projections of coastal storm inundation and flood risk to determine the appropriate information, data, and property risk. The Commission shall meet four times a year. The Commission shall annually report its findings and any recommendations for for proposed legislation to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the President of the Senate, the House Clerk, the Senate Clerk, the Governor, and the State Library on or, for, on or before November 1st. So we'd like to be kept in the loop on yeah. these reporting requirements, the minutes of your meetings, and of course we can access those um, on the web. We don't need hard copy, and we thank you for those, Dave. Uh, but we, we do want a, uh, a large footprint and a large imprint in, in the discussion, and we think that Hampton is, is the heavy in that issue with Portsmouth, a very close second, if not tied with us. And uh, again, Mother Nature um, will do what Mother Nature wants. And we look forward to strict adherence to the law, 
information provided from you to include your study groups, and you can send the links to Mr. Welch and the assistant town manager. We can spread load those. Second issue was the, the flood insurance. And I think we need a, a formal course of action, and we'll, we'll come back to that because Rick wants to talk again on, I think, this, this commission. But we need to uh, um, make the motion so the town manager and the assistant town manager um, executes, and we fulfill that, that metric so we reduce um, our, That's our the rates. That I'm looking oh, you're, you're, you're making that. So we're, so we're going to come to that. That, that is the. Uh, that's the issue, and then again, Selectman Griffin. So the two issues, great work on the commission. We look forward to plenty of information and input. Thank you for the Hampton denizens that uh, do participate that, including Chris. And please thank him for us, and we thank you, Chris. Uh, and then the flood insurance. Now Rick is going to make a motion. Okay. I would like to make uh, the motion um, that both Fred and the new um, assistant town manager uh, who also has been, what, what's he the head of? Uh, emergency management. Emergency, emergency management. Um, and he's done a great job always that they work together with you and to also send out this letter to these 1,700 people uh, and maybe others that might be affected. Um, and I think it's a, a good thing that the uh, village district has offered to share uh, in doing this, this is the first time that something, I know that there's been problems in the past with sending out notices. I think this is a great thing. I think it's a great thing for the village district to do. I live in the village district and I pay taxes there and I, I think this is a great thing to do. So I'd like to make that motion that um, we send this letter and we also have our two town managers uh, work together mm -hmm. as needed. I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. For the discussion. And see. Does, does that mean they become the coordinator that you said you yes. must have? Yeah, I would think. Yeah. Um, or they can <coughs> nominate a coordinator. No, but but that that's that's what that my motion Fred? is. No. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. temporarily. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. 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 All right. Are we that's good, Bob. Yeah. That's by far the best way to handle it. I think. Okay. Well, thank you. Are um, we I, I think we uh, are all going to stick our hands up, and that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Gentlemen, Thanks great job. Life. Thank you. On that CRS uh, warrant article will be on. Will be on the warrant. Right? Right. 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 Thanks, Bob. We gotta do it. Because we're dead if we don't do it, yeah. Moving on. Roman five approval of minutes one December two thousand fourteen. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. A second. I'll second it. I'll be Discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman six. Mr. Welch, your report. Uh -huh. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we've been notified by the Department of Environmental Services that uh, the town improvements that we have been talking to them about in a place called Beach Access will not be permitted. Uh, we have what we have, and they will not allow that to be changed to something new or improved. We may, may maintain what is there and we may continue to periodically clear the stone cobbles that are washed up by the ocean at the access point. We've had a lot of complaints about those cobbles, yep. particularly from elderly people yep. uh, who have great difficulty getting down on the beach over the stairway. Uh, we've been told there's nothing we can do about that except keep on shoveling them away. <laughs> They're just not going to issue a permit for us to do anything on the, down there. Why? Because that's their ruling. I don't. We don't oh. know why. It's just, that's the way they feel. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, the board needs to appoint a number of new members to the Least Land Real Estate Commission, so that we can complete the sale of 33 to 35 Dover Avenue, that is on hold until the appointments can be made. As you know, the commission, we have a difference of opinion in price between the town and the person who wants to purchase the property, who is the mm -hmm. current resident down there. Yeah. Uh, the commission needs to resolve that uh, because we, we're spread more than the statute allows us to be. And that, they're the resolution body. Uh, and we have currently, I believe, one member of the five. Uh, I think the other appointment's up this year, so we would have two if it wasn't for that. Um, we need to appoint at least three and I believe four members in order to re reinstate that commission and get it functioning. So are we looking for, sorry, 
Well, we need to look for, and I'm sort of mentioning it tonight, so hopefully folks will volunteer. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, we can move forward with that. Uh, I'd like to please re remind uh, citizens of the community that the winter parking ban is in effect from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. daily. During snow emergencies, residents can utilize the town parking lots from 7 a.m. until 7 a.m. when vehicles must be removed so the town equipment can clear the lots for future use. And uh, I realize that there was a comment made earlier about uh, the fact that we clear the entire Ashworth Avenue parking lot, and we do that for a purpose. Uh, it is the only place on the beach that we have to deposit snow if we're forced to pick it up in order to clear the sidewalks and other areas. Mm -hmm. So we, we do clear it, we do plow it completely, and we try to keep it clear. And we do, last year, uh, no, the year before last, we had to bring snow down there and pile it at the end of the parking lot down past the police station mm -hmm. so they have a chance to melt and yeah. eventually run out into the into, into the marsh. Um, that's why we plow it, so that we can, in fact, use that lot as a, a disbursement area and a storage area. Uh, businesses are please reminded to uh, remove the trash and recycling carts uh, from the streets and sidewalks after the scheduled pickups and certainly during snow plowing operations, we we do not want, of our, want one of our plows hitting them. They can make a terrible mess when it happens. And, uh, since we're not responsible to replace them out of the current policy by the board, if that should occur, uh, it's an expense for the individual that they don't need to share. It's just not one of those things that should happen. So we do ask people to be careful with that. Um, I've put in my report that I need direction from the board on the High Street Lafayette Road drainage project. Uh, we have uh, a request. Um, we need a, approximately $200,000 in order to uh, clear that project. We were at bid. Uh, the lowest bid was $398,975. Probably going to be a little bit more if we go back to bid because it's a little later. Um, <coughs> We do not have that money. The FEMA grant is $149,156, so we're short. Uh, there was some money earmarked from the Department of Public Works, $46,000. Uh, that's in the operating budget for that project. That leaves us approximately $200,000 short, assuming that cost of bidding has not gone up any. Um, not particularly in favor of that. I hate to lose the $150,000 in federal money. Uh, if we don't take an action, by February, uh, the money will go, period. It's just going to go. Uh, the action needs to be a commitment by the board to uh, um, go to town meeting and appropriate funds. If the town meeting does not appropriate funds, the federal money will automatically lapse at the, at the close of town meeting. Uh, I'm not particularly anxious about doing that. Uh, we have a projection of a very substantial increase in the town tax rate for this coming year which you're going to have to work on at, at some point in time in the next two weeks um, with regards to warrant articles. So this will only add to that pain. And I, I, I don't want to put the citizens of the community in pain, but I have to tell you what we're up against. So uh, an extra $200,000 is a substantial amount of money in anyone's book. So that's something that you'll... Uh, you need to take a few minutes to think about it as you go through the process. Uh, the last thing I have is the corrections, and town council has, has <laughs> sort of changed this on me. Um, he indicates that we need to revote the correction for the minutes of October 20th, 2014. And Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I will read that correction. Thank you, sir. And the uh, responsibility for that uh, misadministration is entirely the chair's. Thank you, sir. Well, go ahead. Regardless of whose it is, it just needs to be one another on the record. I move to correct the minutes of October 20th to retain the wording of parts 9 and 10 on pages 7 and 8 of the minutes of October 20, 2014, meeting so that they appear in their draft form except 1. To strike the following words from 8.02 p.m. and enter into a non-public, quote, and enter into a non-public session under RSA 91A, colon 3, <coughs> Roman 2, A and C, and under RSA 91A, colon 2, Roman 1, A and 2. 
to add the following supplement at the end of the October 20, 2014 minutes on page 8. Supplement. Recognizing that it had that it had not made the re requisite motion or taken a roll call vote, the board did not enter into a non-public session under RSA 91A colon 3 Roman 2 A and C and instead met with count legal counsel in a non-meeting under RSA 91 a colon two Roman one B period. That's a mouthful. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Questions? Well, some more corrections next meeting. Thanks. Oh, there's one more thing. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased uh, because this is something that's very unusual to inform the board that the New Hampshire Water Pollution Control Association announced to the town of Hampton has received the wastewater treatment plant of the year award for their at their winter meeting last Friday. Good. The award is given annually in recognition of exceptional management and operations of a plant. That's great. We get a congratulatory note or something to Mr. Doobie and all the nice uh, personnel <coughs> over there. I've already said something down to Public Works, and we'll. Do this some reinforcing of that as we go along. Very good. Thank you. Great. Select and we'll see questions from Mr. Walsh. Ah, yes. State bridge report. I'm going to confess I can't make heads or tails out of what they're doing. I did. At some point, well, I'm sure you <laughs> did. But I, this seems that it cross purposes to me. Is at some point, are you going to be able to give us a recap on this stuff? Because I, you know. I can't figure it. They're saying things are nice, and then they're saying they're awful, and I can't figure it out. Well, the things they're saying are nice. Uh, the There are required postings on all bridges. Yeah. Uh, given the type of bridge, its size, and structure. Yeah. And our postings are correct, and, and I think that's the nice thing. Uh. But when you read through <laughs> the individual bridges, there crummy. are repairs that need to be made. Uh, there are plans that need to be drawn, mm -hmm. and Public Works needs to do that. I have given the department an instruction to write a report yeah. so they will tell us what they're going to do and develop a plan to do it uh, so that these bridges can be put in a number one shape. Okay. Now it says state bridge reports attached. That doesn't mean these bridges belong to the state or does it? No, the state is required to, re to inspect all municipal bridges once every two years. Okay, so Above they're the evaluating state. our bridge so it's the report from the state about the conditions of the bridges. That is correct. Okay, because that was somewhat, I confess, confusing to me. Uh, yeah, they're not very forthcoming in the way they do it. So if you're not an engineer or familiar with state bridge processes, have to learn how to read the form, and it's not exactly in uh, readable form. It, it was confusing, I will confess. Uh, the letter from the um, selectmen in Newcastle on the uh, hazardous waste drop-off services to other towns once Hampton leaves District 53B, have you responded to Mr. McGuckin, and what are we saying on that? We, we, we chatted on the phone, and, and uh, he understands that that's an item that's going to come up in 2016. Uh -huh. 2015 uh -huh. because we will have, we have already paid for the 2015 pickup in Hampton uh, okay it's part of our, our uh, assessment this right. year and um, they are they are one of the communities and there are now a number of them that have asked to leave the district right and they want to band together with us in order to um, accommodate their hazardous waste pickup they would come here we wouldn't go there uh, their citizens do travel to Hampton to dispose of their material they also go to Brentwood say. Okay. if they're in, the, they in the group, but they're not, uh, or will not be, they hope. Uh, I think there was two people that went to Brent, Brentwood, and there were half a dozen or more that came to, uh, to, to Hampton, which is the, their preference in getting rid of their material. So that also gets us more state aid, because the more communities <laughs> we can bring in, the more money the state will give us. So. Uh, is, is we're this always looking to share the state's money. Is this the state aid like the SRF funding that we're not getting? No, this is environmental money from <laughs> the US EPA that's given to the state for distribution for uh, hazardous waste programs. So somebody's still got money out there. Well, they're still printing it. I'm not sure whether it's <laughs> worth it anything, but they're still printing it. <laughs> and my other questions come under old business, but thank you, Fred. You're welcome. Selectman Griffin. No, thank you for sure. your report. Thank you, sir. No question I have, Fred, is on the... Uh, the drainage on High Street and uh, Lafayette oh, Road. Yes. 
what's the potential hazards to the businesses or the properties in that area if we do nothing? They'll be flooded. Yep. They will be flooded. The water comes down off a of different and uh, hits the curb on the south side of High Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, it accelerates and runs along that curve. It also comes down the driveways on the opposite side. Uh, and it also comes down a Lafayette Road towards the corner. Yes. And yep. when there's a sufficient heavy rainfall, the water jumps the curb and runs into the buildings. The idea here is to, to build a, a drainage system large enough with enough drains and, and, and surge drains in mm -hmm. order to intercept that water and put it into the drain system and haul it away. It's a long, hard process because we not only have to dig up High Street from Dearborn, yeah. uh, and incidentally the plans, when they made them, went further up High Street just in case sometime in the future we need to expand it, mm -hmm. but that's not part of this program. We need to dig that up, we need to remove all the material because there's no place to store it in the road. We need to do the construction, a section or two sections at a time with trench boxes, and then bring in fill material and compact it and then move on. It's, huh. So it's extremely expensive, it's very intensive. Yeah. We could go to the corner, we pick up the Lafayette Road drain coming down the hill. Yeah. Um, that goes down in front of, it's about halfway down the block, and then it goes down through uh, the drain system uh, for opposite Morelli's into um, Stan Brown's property. the yeah. Depot Square area Back. where we have an easement. Yeah. Those pipes would have to be taken out and increased in size in order to take the water volume mm. that's involved. It would run down the hand back and it goes over the, uh, under the tracks and, and, and down the embankment on the back side where the, where the drains fall out. I just want to make sure people know that, and, and we know it's, uh, we, we do have the <coughs> potential next year of our, our uh, you know, assessment going up and our taxes going up but if we don't do some of this stuff Great. the potential yeah. is there that damage. we could have some damage to those buildings and there's that's already been some flooding to those buildings yeah. not not a catastrophic flood but there has been water that's run into the buildings the, uh, the owner obviously is very concerned about that well help yes yeah. so I'm just yeah. that was my only point I wanted to make yeah on that. Selectman Woodell. Yeah, just very quickly, that when you talk about that commission, we needed the lease land real estate yes, commission. Yes, sir. I mean, is the reason we there's nobody on that now because we haven't sold any land or, or we, we did have appointments. Um, one of those members has passed away, Vic Vic Lassard. Yeah. Um, a couple of them have moved off and, or resigned. Uh, for one reason or another. I think we're down to one person at this point. Okay. And is there a time limit that we have to get that? Well, the case is pending, and, and, and we need to do that uh, expeditiously. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain criteria for being on the commission. Uh, you can only serve two terms. Um, concurrent? Uh, they can be, no, they don't have to be concurrent. They can be separate. Uh, it would be best, of course, to have someone who is somewhat knowledgeable of real estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So. Yeah. Okay. And I have a question on the on the drainage of the Lafayette Street. The the reason that we're the, the bids came in higher than we thought, right? Was that the original bids came in? Yes, much higher than we thought. Okay. Um, we we were we sh we were sure the 146 plus the money that we had committed would, would take care of it. It, sh it seems that the problem is that the contractors who bid on it took, went out and took a look. Of course, we make sure they go to the site to take a look at it. And uh, because of the traffic volume and congest congestion, uh, because of the width of the street, the inability to store materials, uh, they felt it's going to cost a lot more for them to put in additional equipment and manpower in order to do that section by section by section going down through there mm -hmm. instead of just opening the street up and laying in pipe. Uh, so it's more expensive to do it that way. Tough job. And, and the reason we're in that problem is just old age drainage or, or it's been neglected or? Most of the drainage that we have in town is corrugated metal pipe. <laughs> it's not plastic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we tend to use, today we, we tend to use sewer pipe for several reasons. First of all, it's got a nice smooth bore to it. Uh, the sections interlock and in, uh, in areas where we would, in this particular case, in areas where we would run through the area with this vegetation, 
yeah. it's very difficult for the roots to get in through the interlock. So they're very rarely <coughs> impacted by trees or, or root systems. Um, and they last for a thousand years. Plastic just doesn't deteriorate. And we're talking fairly good sized plastic here. We're talking up to 20 inches in the uh, on some of these drains. We need something that's going to move. The corrugated pipe or, or metal <coughs> pipe is eventually going to deteriorate to the point where the system will fail completely and the road will collapse. Yeah. It's the same problem we have up on uh, Exeter Road where mm -hmm. you see a lot of drain problems there, a lot of drainage problems because there isn't drainage in some of the areas. In the other areas, there is drainage and, and, and the road is depressed in some places. It's, it's, a, it's a failure and fatigue factor in the drain. Mm. That'd be the same the same instance we had down at Five Corners a couple of years ago? Yeah, yes. with the fire truck in the, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> the pipe failed because they were old. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and it collapsed. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, that was uh, down on Winnicott Road. Yeah. And, and uh, well, they put high a street. High, street. High, street. high Street. High Street, yeah. Five Corners. Winnicott yeah. Road had the same problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and they put a box culvert in there. Is actually a box bridge because right. that's one of the bridge requirements. It's more than 10 feet wide. Uh -huh. That's not even a flooding problem that you mentioned on High Street. Yeah. Because when you look at the um, the bridge box culvert that they put in, it's set too high and it's tipped up running out. So it retains water back yeah. into the pond. Yeah. 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 I just, you know, I, I agree with what you said. Uh, you know, that, that it's, it's going to be really hard to, I mean, you're talking about $200,000. I mean, we're talking about infrastructure problems that have been built up over the years that haven't been dealt with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And now we're getting to a point where it's critical that they be dealt with. Yeah. And it's, it's so we're putting more articles in that, that are dealing with a lot of money that... Mm -hmm. Stuff that hasn't been done in years. Fine. I think we all agree on that. Okay. Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Mr. Welsh, thank you for thank your uh, report. And uh, it really is good to have you back. Uh, my comments on that is uh, the public Department of Public Works uh, has a very, very challenging job. Uh, and it's our largest department by far. And they do a magnificent job with the effluent. And that pump station was just about to go south. Oh, yeah. And uh, our director came in there in working under your guidance, uh, basically was Superman. He was a superhero and he saved that thing and he provided that sinister touch in the, in the bidding uh, and saved, I believe, uh, over seven figures mm -hmm. uh, in actually executing that contract. We had, a, we had an original cost in excess of $7 million to yeah. so replace that station and we replaced it for under, I believe it was under four. So, uh, so yeah, he's getting awards, he's getting some kudos. That's not always the, uh, the deal for um, Public Works, but in this case that is. So I, I wanted to uh, offer that praise to Public <coughs> Works. Just to just, uh, go back for just a second, Mr. Chairman, is there anything the board wants to do with, and you may just tell me to wait till next week if you want to think about it. High Street, because I need I'm to coming back if you okay. if you okay. right. let me have the floor. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, it, yes. And uh, <laughs> if you need somebody on the uh, least uh, real estate commission, happy to happy to wear that hat so we can close on property for the town. Uh, the public works director uh, in you need to huddle. You need to prepare a motion uh, for our edification, and so we can study it early this week. Okay. Um, and we'll bring it up for Monday to include numbers. Uh, there's $150,000 of grant money that will evaporate if we don't execute. Is that That's correct? correct? So uh, that will subsidize 40% of the project. <coughs> yep. That's correct. So if you can if you can do that, bring it back next week. Uh, get that out by Wednesday, Thursday, so we can study it. We'll add that to the warrant articles. Warrants came in from department heads over nine million. We're somewhere around two million right now on the list. Uh, this is infrastructure. This is important stuff. Nobody wants to spend money, but we're investing money. The Boston Globe had a, a front page article this Sunday about a bridge they can't use, and no one is addressing these important issues. And I think we are here in Hampton. Mr. Griffin. I just want to say exactly what we're talking about with this on High Street, with the water coming down off Dearborn, that's exactly what's happening that's on Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, it's draining right off of Boar's Head. And I know that the planning board has done what they can to try to uh, limit the uh, you know areas where like re uh, people that want to have their whole yards paved, 
uh, sealed surfaces, but that's exactly the same thing. I mean, here we could, and that's what I say to people all the time, if this was something the town could fix, it would be fixed, but it's the state where oh, yeah. the problem is. Yeah. But this is an effort, the same exact thing that I'm suffering, they're going to, the town is going to try to fix it, or at least make that available. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm up against, <clears throat> having to deal with the state instead of the town. Interestingly enough, just so I think people understand what the town's doing, in, in particular in your case and other cases along that area of, the, of uh, Route 1A, uh, not only did we have the state come out and meet with us as the town, we also had representatives from the United States Army Corps of Engineers come and meet with us. I was part of that. And the Army, yes, I know you were, and the Army Corps gave the state permission to go in and clean out those drains because they've grown in over the years because they won't maintain them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the town did blow out some of those drain works, at least what we could in order to help the state, and the state just walked away. So they have no intention of repairing those at this point. Wonderful. Like I just admission. want to see, please, on the high street Lafayette drainage, competent engineering. I don't want another Exeter Road stuff. I want real engineering on that. Duly yes, noted. it does need to be done. Thank you, ma'am. We ready to move on? Okay. Roman 7, Old Business, one direction on the removal of the Drake Side Road abutment removal. Selectman Wolsey. As I read uh, Deputy Jacobs, uh, memo which is actually very well done but I have a question because that's the reason I went up Drakeside Road this morning went up the back way to go to work um, there is a substantial dip in the road oh yes and I would like to see and I I'm I'm not sure uh, given the wording in here but the the road needs to be raised, it would seem to me, once that stuff is gone. And I'm assuming, should I dare to assume, that that, that would be part, that you can't, it floods in there, it's, it's a mess down in there. If we can straighten the road out and elevate it somewhat once you get rid of that, and how are we going to keep those embankments from going when it rains? The original proposal that we had to remove the abutments mm -hmm. there, okay, mm -hmm. um, we actually had a bid on it. And I think I included it in the mm -hmm. paperwork. Uh, the high bid was $41,960. Uh, we were going to remove those uh, for low bid, which was uh, $26,844. And that would also slope the side banks, loam and seed them, and, and stabilize them. And it would take that material and fill the road, level it so it was level, and put drainage in. Yeah, because that's there's already a, a drain there. It just needs yeah, to be but it's cleaned up. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a huge dip in the road. Very bad. When the state got involved in this, <laughs> uh, it went from twenty six thousand eight hundred and forty four dollars to our estimate of four hundred and twenty four thousand two hundred and four dollars. <laughs> so. I noticed the other day that we have a new commissioner of DOT coming on on January 2nd or 3rd, whatever the first working day is of the year, and my suggestion is that we get our state reps and our state senator and we have a meeting with him and we go back to the $26,000 proposal or, or something of that nature and see if we can't do something to resolve this issue and fix that road. Um, there's never going to be another railroad there. That's that's for certain. As long as the power plant's there, and that's going to be another <coughs> 40 or 50 years, yeah. from what I understand. Yeah. Um, and they've already, this when I was in Seabrook, they already already made a proposal to put a second power plant in. And I know they're working on that. It won't be nuclear, it'll be gas, but it's going to be right there oh, on the railroad. Interesting. Um, there's no question they're going to put a railroad, they're not going to put a railroad bridge back in. Okay. Certainly not in the next 100 years or so. so. I think it's a situation of where we need to sit down, we need to practically do this, and we can do it for a reasonable amount of money. You know, I noticed, because Public Works had to get down there last week when, when we had the, the rain because of some of the flooding, mm -hmm. but of course, as you know, Seabrook has the same type of bridge over there in Seabrook, and uh, they lost two cars in there last, last week uh, yeah. because they got flooded out. Yeah. No, nobody that, goes in that underneath that. Uh, through that pass now in Seabrook when it rains. Yeah, and so that's the same thing that can happen there, and I've yeah, seen many cars flooded out in, in, on Drakeside Road. Plus, plus people 
the swerving into other lanes, mm -hmm. the narrowness through it there. Mm -hmm. so my concern is getting ambulance, fire engines, and police cars through there. Absolutely. I, I'm not con too concerned about private vehicles because I think most people have enough <coughs> sense, most people, I didn't say all people, enough, enough have enough sense not to drive through it uh. when they see standing water in a roadway. It's a bad idea regardless of where you are. But of course, we have occasionally one or two that do that. So, so what are, are we looking to wait till after the first of the year to talk to them, or do I, you want I would wait till after the first of the year to talk to them. And I and, and originally we had with that sum we had prepared to do without the public works budget, and I think that money mm -hmm. is still generally there, and we could we could do this program on a on a, on a, on a basis. Yeah. Um, I, I think we can work something out if somebody really wants to sit down and talk to us. Including raising the road, though? Yeah. That I mean, that's be. critical. Well, yeah, because the backfill material is We've behind the embankments. Yeah. has to come down. We got As long as that's good material, and Level which I'm sure it is, uh, then that material can be, can, can be brought down and can be leveled out, mm -hmm. compacted, and we can pave over that after we install drainage. Yeah. Now, it's going to require some coordination with the phone company, uh, with the cable company, water. and with the water company, yeah. because they have units running through there. And I'm pretty sure they don't want to have a 14-foot dig to fix a right. fix a pipe. So right. we can work on Good. that and get it done. It's Good. not a big deal. It's not a big job, but it does require, I think, some horsepower to get it done through the state. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Welch, on that, and uh, we'll look forward to you developing those courses of action to include scope of work, length of work, and cost. And if I may, just for a second here, I see a taxpayer that's in the audience. Mr. Green, what are you here for this evening? I'm here for the naming of a street at 370. I'd like to move that forward. Uh, you're a resident of taxpayer. Can we come up to the table, please? And let's let's move that up. I actually didn't know if I was even supposed to be here for this. But we yeah. don't know either, but have a seat and let's let's work through this. Um, we've, we've seen names. Mr. Welch, can you give us what you have, please? Well, as soon as I find it, sir. Yeah, take it out of order. Thank you. Yes, I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm out of order. <laughs> No, you're we heard Mr. Moody address it in public. I believe comment. that uh, the three names that were suggested were Robertson Path, and and that's uh, one of the things that was suggested before. Is town officials and Wanda Robinson recently passed away. That's how you get to Robinson Pass, and not not the na name that uh, hmm. someone else brought up. Colcord Drive and Hilliard Drive. And I don't know if any of those met with favor or you have an optional list. Well, we put it in the order uh, that we wanted, starting with Robertson um, for Wanda. And um, the others, I mean, they go back to the King Philip's War, which I've never heard of. A <laughs> little old. <laughs> <laughs> little old, 16, 16 70. Yeah, school. Do you know King Philip's War? Yes. Oh, yes. I know sure. nothing about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh, so we, we've got your first uh, preference. Uh, yes. King Philip's War was, uh, King Philip was actually Medicom. He was an Indian sachem. And right. uh, in terms of statistics, it was the most costly war ever conducted by wow. the United States of America. Very worth reading. Selectman Wilson. You got a history I thought it, I King Philip's War was a prior incarnation of the chairman, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, Colcord is too close to Concord. I certainly wouldn't want to see that. Uh, I thought, are we deviating from the policy of naming streets after military, uh, fallen military individuals? I realize that's a reach going back to King Philip. Well, it was a reach, but, but uh, that was the way that went. Um, well, the suggestion was that if we had no uh, qualified people to name it from a war, uh, in, the, in the opinion of the board, that we we name it after public officials or employees, or you know, just like we did for a deceased firefighter. Uh, well, yes. Brian Litchfield. Brian yeah. Litchfield. Yeah. Yes. If, if I can just grab the floor, we, and we can talk about you know King Philip's War and everything. But I think Wanda uh, was wonderful. It was a sudden loss. I commend you for for making that your first priority. And Mr. Griffin wants to speak, but that's that's where I want to go. And if there's a motion, great. I think that it was wasn't there a, a Warren article that said it was supposed to be for military? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm for sticking with that. I like uh, uh, Arthur's idea. Mm -hmm. And what was that? Uh, Benjamin Sweat. Or the other one, Richards, was it Richardson? Or there's a Richard mm -hmm. Street though across the Our, street, isn't there? Yeah, there these is. three have passed 911. I don't know the Richardson one. Well. 
There is a Richard Street. Yeah, there is a Richard, Richard Street. Street. It may be too close. Yeah. yeah. So I like the idea of sweat. I agree with Rick. Yep. Well, uh, you go ahead, sir. Uh, I, I was under the impression we had a choice from two of these are military. No, two of not. the selections that we've ha put on our list are military, the King Philip's okay, War. Well. Okay. And I really am not, a, I don't want Sweat Street. I don't blame you. <laughs> So what is what is what is what is the what second the Benjamin Sweat way? Uh, Cole Cord and Hilliard. Cole Cord is too close. They were to civilians. Conquer. I won't go for that. Cole Cord is is an Exeter name, really. Cole Cord's garage. It's unknown whether either of those were military. Cole Cord or Hill, Hilliard. This was and we don't know their first. Wait, yeah, we you do know their first. This was the list given to us by the town of people yeah. to pick from. I mean, we didn't make these up. I'd be picking a completely different name. Okay, it's the town. So, <laughs> you, you, who provided that list, Mr. Welch? Do we know? I think it was taken out of the town history. Town history. Okay. Yeah. Colcord sounds too much like Concord. It does. We're not. We're sticking with the military. What's the What's the next choice? Hilliard. Hilliard. I like it. Hilliard's a great Hampton name. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Hilliard. Ave, Hilliard Road. Um, I don't know what we had written. Ave drive. Street Hilliard drive. Drive. Hilliard drive. Yeah, I think it sounds nice. It's fine with me. A second? I'll second. Waddell, all those in favor? Four. Those opposed? I'm going to abstain. And an abstention. How'd you get uh, Hilliard it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it, sir. Well done. Good night now. Thank you. Okay, and, and uh, now we'll come back in order Can here. Can I just ask one question? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, getting back to the the town warrant or the when they they had them named uh, on, as for servicemen, was that advisory or was that? By law, the selectmen are the only people who can name streets. I would say thirty one. I think it's one twenty two. Um, that doesn't mean that they obviously town meeting can't advise the selectmen on what they'd like to see. So it's, so it's advisory, and, and and I'm just getting to that because we are stretching it going back so far. Yeah. And I think that that um, uh, there is some merit to naming it for people that have worked for this town for either a number of years, yeah. or who died in line of duty for this town, or or uh, did a lot of service for this town. Would so I'd like that, to see a warrant article of that effect. I don't, no, I don't. I don't want. I don't think we need one. I think you don't need one by law. I don't think we need one. I think this was only advisory, anyways, and I think that yeah. moving forward. Yeah. That we well, okay. it, you know, motions and votes carry the day, and we can talk about it all night. But we've we've, we've cleared hurdles on this, and, okay. and I think yeah. we're going to yeah. move on. Okay, um, Mr. Welch, number two, approval of warranty deed for tax map twenty eight seven two eighty seven lot thirty to Hampton Beach Village District Precinct Precinct Parking Lot in parentheses. Uh, so. Well, I believe Council's here, and he drafted these or assisted in drafting these. <laughs> uh, this is the transfer of property for the Beach Fire Station. Yeah, um, this is a part of a process that's the culmination of something that actually started quite long ago uh, with the uh, a memorandum of understanding between the uh, selectmen uh, back in 2012 in the Hampton Beach Village District uh, following the vote on a warrant article uh, whereby the town is being deeded a lot where the Beach Fire substation is located and in return, the Beach Village District is receiving a lot on the corner of Brown Avenue mm -hmm. um, where um, <coughs> it was formerly leased land. And so this uh, um, swapping of deeds is called for under the Memorandum of Understanding uh, as well as a right of first <coughs> refusal so that the district, in case the town ever decided not to continue the use of the fire substation, mm -hmm. would have a right of first refusal to buy that lot. So uh, these documents are the product of that. They've been uh, scrupulously looked at by both the bond council way back when and uh, by myself and by uh, Attorney Sharon Summers for the Beach Village District. And so uh, the as I understand it, the at their last meeting on Wednesday, the Beach Village District Commissioners signed the deed mm -hmm. to the town for the lot on which the Beach Fire Substation sits uh, on a resubdivision plan that was approved by the Planning Board that already filed at the registry. And uh, so this is our end of those those uh, Thank transactions. Thank you. Uh, a prepared motion will go to the board. Um, so these are companion articles, basically. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have no problem with them. Sir. So the, 
Hull. Oh, thank, thank you. So you need a motion to accept this right of refusal, I mean, right of first refusal, the okay. warranty deed, and the letter of agreement? A uh, letter of agreement is a separate item, but that's all right. Okay. So, Mr. Waddell. Okay. And do you have those motions prepared? Uh, that would be simply the motions to sign the, the instruments as uh, prepared by counsel I'll for the uh, motion. Griffin. Okay. I'll, oh, okay. Griffin Waddell. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Thank you. Roman th or number three, approval of right of first refusal. Just approve that. Okay, we did both of those. You did both. All right. Mark, are you out? You good? Yep. Uh, one more on uh, that. Uh, the uh, letter of agreement with the utilities that uh, Rusty just oh, referenced. Yes. Which okay, is, uh, Roman 8, new business, one approval of an authorized town manager to sign a letter of agreement with the utilities, Dalton Lane. Right. right. That's a piece of the process that uh, is part of the ultimate acceptance of Dalton Lane. Uh, this piece has to do with the fact of there being a prior um, easement given by the developer to Unitil and what is now Fairpoint, right here. and yep. um, the that letter of agreement, the, the, yep. the easement on file with the Registry of Deeds suggests that the developer will, um, if, if called upon to do so, move at his expense, uh, if, if it's necessary to, to move the utility lines, that it will be at the developer's expense. In accepting the road, we want no such agreement. If we need to move the utilities uh, to repair the road that's a town road it would be at their expense and this letter of agreement is something we've done before in other roads we've accepted to clear up that issue before you accept ultimately accept the road uh, it calls for the signatures of the two utilities involved as well as of a town official and the motion tonight is simply to authorize Fred to sign that letter of agreement I have actually tried for about a year and a half to get the utilities to include language in that letter of understanding whereby they would agree <laughs> to allow themselves to be taxed for their presence in the right-of-way. Uh, Fairpoint has adamantly refused to sign any document that would allow such a thing. So um, we, we have previously, a prior board has gone to the point which state law allows of having a hearing whereby we amend every single agreement for every single poll that has or or utility line that has been erected before to allow them to be taxed to give the necessary statutory language and apparently we're going to have to go through that proceeding one by one for future lines because they won't agree to it uh, but that's beside the point this is the separate step of getting this to the point of your ultimate vote to accept the road. Thank you. Is there a motion? And a I'll motion would be to authorize the town manager as the town's representative to sign this letter of understanding. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Wolsey Bridal, the second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Roman 8, new business number 3, bid waivers under purchasing policy section 718-4, bravo, parentheses 1, alpha, 2014 through 2018 sodium hypochlorate DPW Bravo 2014-19 sodium bisulfate DPW Mr. Welch Mr. Chairman members of the board um, these bids exceed fifty thousand uh, dollars they are two-year proposals uh, there were the re requisite number of bidders there were three uh, the first one which is item A which is sodium hypochlorate uh, is valued at $59,500 for two years. And the, th the second one, which is uh, sodium bisulfite, uh, is $90,000 even for a period of two years. The regulations require the board to grant approval for the bids. They, they do, every, in all other ways, they comply with the bidding process. Mm -hmm. But they do exceed 50000 which means they need to come before the board. Thank you. I'll move to accept the waiver of the bid process and I have one quick question are these both of the sewer treatment plant yes ma'am they are okay gentlemen no. sir there's a motion second so I'll second second the title all those in favor unanimous Roman 9 closing comments whoop, 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 whoop. Roman 9 closing comments no, may we do a little more under new business possibly well, new business, as you know, yes. goes on the on the agenda for new business oh. by Thursday at noontime. Oh, 
All right. That's how that works. Okay. Roman 9, closing comments. Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. At 2041. Second. Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. No objections. I do have signature. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Do you have a black pen as well? I certainly do.